Okay, I think um, it is time to start the session. Welcome everyone. Could I have the, the next slide? So welcome everyone to this uh, online session. For us, it's uh, the first session of this uh, community-based adaptation conference. So uh, it's of course uh, for all of us uh, still uh, getting used to, uh, to doing this virtually while not uh, being able to see and interact with our audience. But um, it's great to uh, have all of you here. And um, so what are we going to do today? So first of all, we'll start with an introduction of uh, ourselves and of yourselves participants in, this, uh, in these sessions. Uh, then we will uh, look at an introduction of uh, business case development uh, and as part of the introduction of business case development, the use of the business canvas can be very useful. So we use this opportunity to give you a brief introduction of the business canvas. Uh, then we have an introduction of the Dragon's Den. And with that, my presentation is over and uh, we will open the floor for questions about this topic which is uh, probably fairly new to many of us so we'll have plenty of time for for discussion and questions and then the last 15 minutes of the session we uh, we will uh, try to hear from you to what extent you have a project that you would like to pitch on um, Thursday of, uh, of uh, on sorry Wednesday of this uh, conference next slide please so who are we? This is the team that is currently um, uh, fo focusing on, on this session. Uh, the, the team that is uh, working from an expertise of uh, conservation finance. Uh, we are working for IUCN and uh, Jesper Hernberg is uh, supporting us in uh, pitch advice. So he's the expert in, in how to pitch, why to pitch, how to go about it. And uh, uh, Jesper will lead a session uh, tomorrow, uh, late afternoon, uh, that will uh, help you to, to, uh, to, to improve your, your pitch and to know how to best present your project. Next slide, please. So we would like to hear from you. Who are you? Uh, and maybe give an indication if you're uh, uh, part of the younger group of people that we, of course, hope to, uh, to attract, especially with this session. And maybe you can also briefly uh, say something about your experience with uh, the CBA conference in the past or uh, other conference that, uh, that you have been part of and that you have learned from. So I would just like to quickly open the floor uh please open your videos if possible and uh, just give us a little uh, idea of who you are and um, why you are participating i slowly start to see your faces very exciting monisha would you like to start Sure. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Monisha Shreshta. Uh, I am with Practical Action, working as the thematic lead for sustainable agriculture and markets. And I'm based out of Kathmandu, Nepal. So namaste, greetings to you all from Kathmandu. Uh, I namaste. wish I could say I wish I could say I was um, I am younger than 35 at heart. I may be, but um, not in terms of age. Uh, I've, this is my first CBA that I've attended, but I've worked extensively in the agriculture sector in the market systems development. So I'm, um, so in a way I am a little familiar with the, um, you know, the business planning, business um, canvas, but I just wanted to um, brush up my knowledge and just get updated on what's going on especially learn how we can use this tool um, when it comes to adaptation project. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to learning from all of you. 
and I'm happy to be here. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. And probably I should just pass it on to Yen. Thank you. Thanks a lot for this uh, enthusiastic uh, introduction. Who, who else would like to introduce him or herself briefly? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is, is Geoffrey Katerega. I'm based in Kampala in Uganda. Um, I work with an organization called the Humanitarian Open uh, Street Map Team, uh, where I work as a community manager. Um, I'm here to uh, learn and be inspired. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Geoffrey. Who's next? I guess it should be Mia. Hi, good morning. Good morning. My name is uh, Chikumbuto Kilembe. Uh, I am from Malawi. I work for the Irish Embassy in Lilongwe, Malawi. I will be just turning 35 this year in December. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm younger than 35 anymore, but uh, that, that, is that counts for me. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. So I have attended, I attended the CBA in uh, Addis Ababa last year. Uh, so that's why uh, when I attended the session of the dragons, uh, then I got interested because uh, I have interest in um, business plan development, especially the social in enterprises uh, that work on energy, uh, energy solutions for the poor, as well as uh, uh, solving the problem of waste management in urban areas. Uh, so my idea of of, of of a business project that can be an adaptation project uh, as well as a business at the same time is that which will turn waste into energy. I'm interested in that kind of business. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Are you going to pitch, do you think, this uh, this time? Uh, not this time. Uh, I think this time I'll, I would want to hear more from uh, what others are doing. Okay. Uh, before I, I pitch my own, uh, maybe I can be convinced otherwise. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction. Thank you so much. Who's next? Do you get me, Ian? Hi. Yes. Hi, Ian. So this is Ashish. I'm from Bangladesh. So currently I'm working as the program manager for climate change and DRF for Helvetas Space Inter Corporation. Okay. I know that I do like around 35, but yeah, I have crossed it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and well, this is for the first time in CBA. And uh, to tell the truth, actually I registered for other session, but I was in the waiting list, that's why she's here. Okay. But I'm very happy to see you all here. And well, uh, I have worked with few projects that we have actually uh, tried to uh, apply the community-based entrepreneurship and like that. So yeah, have some ideas on businesses. So let's see to hear with your idea and how I can amass it all. My most interest will be learning actually about the dragon dance and how it works so that I can apply in the later round. Eh? Okay, nice meeting Thanks. you again. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I have a quick question, Debbie, to you. Uh, is it possible to put the the system in such a way that the person who talks shows up as the as the main screen? Uh, yes, of course, I can do that. Great. Thanks. Debbie is supporting us with the technology. Sorry for uh, interrupting. <laughs> so who's next? This is much more interesting than my presentation. It's much more interesting to learn what everyone is doing. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Habiba Fora. I am from uh, Garissa, Kenya. That's the northern part of Kenya. I work with Haki Nasheria Initiative. It's a human rights organization, but I'm focused on uh, our environmental justice uh, project that works with uh, pastoral communities around extractive sites. And uh, we're trying to build their resilience and adaptation to climate change. I am fortunately younger than 35, 
still, thank God. Uh, <laughs> so I have a lot um, to do. Before I get to 35, this is my first CBA. I had about the first, the last year's Dragon Den, and uh, it sounded very exciting, so I thought I could join this one. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you. We're looking forward to your participation. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else who would like to introduce him or herself? Good morning. Hi. Jesse, good morning. Someone else is going to speak then? Yeah, please go ahead. Someone else who, who just now spoke, please go ahead. Jesse, oh. you, you, you go first. Okay. Okay, great. Jesse. I think that may have been Elisa, so thank you, Lisa. Um, yes, so my name is Jesse, and I'm based in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, I'm actually from the US, though. I'm over 35, um, but I do work with a social enterprise that is a startup. It's called Plan Adapt. Um, a couple of us are here at uh, CBA, uh, and this is my third CBA, actually. Um, okay. So I'm looking forward to hear um, about, I guess, you know, the business canvas and the type of, of work um, within the context of CBA, of course, so community-based adaptation. Yeah, thank you. Great, and looking forward to it. Elisa, sorry that we interrupted you earlier. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So I'm Elisa vendela uh, from Philippine Red Cross. Um, I was I was working with the Philippine Red Cross for almost uh, 15 years. We are uh, doing different DRR and CCE activities here, but I was also working in one of the volunteer group, uh, which is a youth-led uh, community group uh, working with a different community-based project and uh, small scale uh, livelihood programs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting. Anyone else? If not, then uh, oh. we will have. Oh, sorry. No, there's Jesper here, John. I just thought I'd add, uh, since everyone is introducing themselves so nicely, I'll just mention, I'm Jesper that John mentioned before, and I'll, I'll work with you tomorrow afternoon late uh, on the pitching, uh, how to structure that and what to think about. Um, not my first CBA. I was in Addis uh, last year, uh, also working with uh, John and his colleagues uh, then. It's a pleasure to see you all and, and very exciting um, stories you have. I look forward to working with you. Thanks, Jesper. So yes, uh, let's uh, us from the uh, uh, team that is making this possible. Let's make give a, a quick introduction as well. Maybe funny. Would you like to quickly say something? An introduction from the team. No, for yourself. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. I was <laughs> I was still reading the chat because also in the chat there are two participants that introduced themselves. <laughs> But um, yeah. yeah, so my name is uh, Fanny Verkuilen. I'm a colleague of Jan Willem den Beste in, uh, in the ICN NL office. And uh, well, together we form a team that's working on the mobilization of climate finance and uh, working towards uh, climate resilient landscapes in, uh, well, from our part in, in Uganda and Ghana, uh, but together with, uh, with colleagues from the WWF and with Tropenbos International. Um, in, in even more countries and landscapes. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> oh, and this is my first time to attend the CBA. Thanks. Alexandra? Just putting my video back on. I am yeah. Alex. Um, I'm uh, helping out with like the organization behind the scenes of um, uh, pulling this session together. Um, so I'm really listening in. I'm really passionate about sustainability and um, climate-based adaptation. So 
uh, yeah, excited to hear what, what different opinions are and what people have to say. Thanks. Uh, Becky? Hi everyone, um, I'm Becky and I'm uh, the rapporteur for this session. Um, you may have seen my name around because I'm helping with the CBA 14 um, team in general um, behind the scenes to kind of make sure everything's running smoothly. Um, so that's me and you, I look forward to hearing all of your opinions in this session and um, hearing some of your projects and pitches. Um, and it sounds really exciting, I can't wait. Thanks, thanks a lot. And last but not least, Debbie. Hiya, uh, I'm Debbie, I'm all things tech. <laughs> um, so I'm looking after the Zoom um, and I'm part of the events industry, but a big uh, conversation at the moment in the industry is about sustainability and the environment. So it'll be really interesting to see what, uh, yeah, what, what stuff you guys are coming up with. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So uh, let's uh, go ahead with the, with the presentation, which um, won't be very long. But um, could I have the next slide? And oops, I'm just trying to, uh, yeah, to have the maximum size for myself as well. So we, we will briefly uh, look at um, what you can expect from the Dragons Den this week, because this is the first session uh, out of four that are related to the Dragons Den that's going to be organized on Wednesday. Then we will look at, uh, at the business canvas, um, how this tool can help you uh, to, to develop your project into uh, something bigger, something that can attract new types of finance. And then finally, most importantly, the last part of the session, we will discuss with you, hopefully, uh, what your project looks like, what the potential is for finding new types of finance, develop a business case, or maybe your organization doesn't do that, but maybe the organizations and the communities that you work with have the potential to, to develop a business idea. Next slide, please. So we would like to emphasize that this is uh, uh, very much an exchange. Also the, 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 the pitching event, the Dragons then itself is not just about winning, it's also about sharing our ex experiences and sharing our networks. It is active learning, so I'm trying to talk as little as possible, but really try to, to hear from you and, uh, and create the, the, the space where you, as, uh, as a group of uh, practitioners and experts, can, can know each other and, and continue the discussion and the joint uh, learning and working after this session as well. And as we do that in the context of this conference, of course, we will also work on a, on a collective uh, understanding uh, of the challenges that we, that we face in our work, but especially, of course, a uh, collective uh, understanding of how we overcome these challenges and, uh, and improve and expand our, our solutions. Next slide, please. So central to this session is uh, something that, that we call the finance gap. Um, as we probably all know, uh, there is a lot of uh, climate finance around. Uh, finance internationally that is meant to make climate adaptation and climate mitigation possible. But as we see that uh, at the moment already an estimated $500 billion or more is being put into climate projects, uh, we see that only at, 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 a, at the very most 10%, only 10% of these billions of US dollars are actually uh, uh, reaching the local levels where we work with local NGOs, where we all work with local communities on climate solutions. So it's, it's an incredible small amount that actually uh, reaches the, 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 the levels of, of the people that really face uh, the, the greatest impact of climate change. Uh, and another statistic is that, uh, that only 20% uh, 
of global climate finance is uh, reaching adaptation projects. And as we all know, uh, adaptation is uh, super important because the impacts of climate change are now uh, being seen and felt everywhere. So these, uh, these statistics about large amounts of money available, but very little actually uh, reaching the ground, reaching communities and very little uh, reaching adaptation shows that there is an imbalance, there's a gap between projects that we all work on that often focus, often focus specifically on adaptation with local communities, community-based adaptation projects. There are a lot of great projects, but they're far removed from the finance that is around globally, but that finds it difficult to, to reach those projects. So that's the gap that, uh, that we're talking about. Next slide. And because of this gap, uh, between projects and finance, uh, we, uh, we, we realize that uh, there is skills uh, uh, needed uh, to, to, to reach, to access finance. Um, there, we, we have to develop skills and, and of course that means learning from each other, uh, for example from, from projects or organizations that did manage to, to access finance. Um, and central in, in that uh, approach to, to reach the finance that we normally don't find, part of that approach is uh, business development. Uh, it doesn't mean to say that we only have to make business cases and that, that everything has to be commercialized, but at least it is part of the, of the mix of finance that we can access to scale up our climate um, adaptation um, technology and projects. So in this session, we look at uh, the business canvas model as a tool to develop business cases. And this directly links to the session that we have on Wednesday at 12 o'clock UK time, and that's the Dragon's Den. The Dragon's Den, where we hope that, that several of you will present your project and present how you think you can access uh, different types of finance. I just already got it in the chat one question from, from you here, which was asking, do we only focus on, on private finance? The answer is no. We, we will need, in many cases of community-based adaptation, we will need public finance. Uh, but the idea is that some of that public finance we can also use to leverage private finance. So it is super interesting to see how your project perhaps can uh, find uh, public finance uh, and, and use some of that public finance to also work on uh, attracting private finance. Next slide, please. Could I have the next slide, please? Or is the presentation stuck? Oh, no, sorry. We have the video at this point. We have a little introductory video of using the business cancel uh, business canvas. organization's business model can be described with nine basic building blocks. Your customer segments, your value proposition for each segment, the channels to reach customers, customer relationships you establish, the revenue streams you generate, the key resources and key activities you require to create value, the key partners, 
and the cost structure of the business model. But it's not sufficient to just enumerate the nine building blocks. What you really want to do is to map them out on a pre-structured canvas. This is what we call the business model canvas, a tool that helps you map, discuss, design and invent new business models. Let's briefly go through the nine building blocks, starting with the customer segments. These are all the people or organisations for which you're creating value. This includes simple users and paying customers. For each segment, you have a specific value proposition. These are the bundles of products and services that create value for your customers. The channels describe through which touch points you're interacting with customers and delivering value. The customer relationships outline the type of relationship you're establishing with your customers. Revenue streams make clear how and through which pricing mechanisms your business model is capturing value. Then you need to describe the infrastructure to create, deliver and capture value. The key resources show which assets are indispensable in your business model. The key activities show which things you really need to be able to perform well. The key partners show who can help you leverage your business model, since you won't own all key resources yourself nor you perform all key activities. Then once you understand your business model's infrastructure, you'll also have an idea of its cost structure. So with the business model canvas, you can map out your entire business model in one image. This works for startup entrepreneurs just as well as for the most senior executives. Thanks Debbie for uh, showing that video. Uh, could I have the next slide now? Thanks. So yeah, probably uh, this video might be a slightly overwhelming because there's all this terminology that we as, as NGO uh, uh, practitioners are not you know, working with in our day-to-day -day life. I have the same issue. I, I don't have a financial background but an NGO conservation background. So so, so what is a business case? Uh, a business case is basically an explanation for a certain project that you want to, to start. Uh, so it's, it's, it's just a, a piece of uh, text that explains your project. Uh, but it is different from a normal project that we maybe use to, uh, to, to find uh, public uh, donors or philanthropic money. No, this is a project that, uh, that has some financial or economic benefits. So it's a different way of making a project. It could be something like uh, ecotourism, or it could be uh, a project that, that produces a sustainable uh, technology for, for, for climate smart agriculture. Uh, but it is, it is a, an activity or, or, or a product that, that can actually be sold. Um, and the business case as a, as a text, as a piece of paper, uh, simply helps uh, someone who might have money to, to make it possible. It helps that person or group of persons to make a decision whether this is investable or not. Next slide, please. So every project, every business case starts with the very basic idea you have a certain idea to to help or to work with a community work with an entrepreneur work with a group of people on uh, a solution you you often have a solution in mind for which you 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 look uh, for for help and assistance and peers to make it happen um, so in order to 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 make uh, the, the idea uh, possible to grow, you need certain things. You need uh, to, to work with, with other persons. You have to exchange ideas. You have to be able to, to get some, some space and some resources to incubate it, to allow it to grow. And then gradually, as your idea gets, gets more uh, legs and, and hands, it uh, it you you get to the to the stage where you need 
uh, finance to, to make it possible. Uh, you need a global network that can help you to make it. And gradually you, you are giving wings to, to your idea. Next slide, please. And as you gradually allow your idea to grow into an actual uh, project that, that can attract uh, investors and can attract other people to work with you, uh, it becomes very important, as we saw, to communicate your project and to communicate it in such a way that potential investors uh, understand uh, whether this is something they want to invest in. And once more, we also encourage you to, to apply this to your projects that perhaps first need public finance. But even with public finance, for example, climate uh, finance funds, such as the Green Climate Fund, they very often uh, like projects that, that also have a commercial component in it or that have a horizon in the future where you say like, well, once we have tested this new technology or this new information system, once we have proven uh, that it's working, um, we would like to scale it up. And there's a possibility to scale it up amongst uh, the private sector, for example. So, um, so as we see, it's a, it's a communication tool. The core uh, component of the business canvas is uh, business case canvas model is what is your uh, value proposition? How do you create value? And you, you, you create value because you have a certain product uh, or a certain service that you deliver. Ecotourism is a product. Uh, a satellite uh, data analysis to inform farmers about weather changes and, and uh, droughts and, and rain coming. That's analysis of information and making it available for farmers, for example, that's a product, that's a service. And like that, there is a multiple uh, uh, possibility for, uh, for climate related solutions that create value for governments, for farmers, for, uh, for all, all kinds of persons and groups in, in your landscape or in the country that you, you operate. So um, in the business canvas, you have these nine components that, uh, for which you need information in order to, uh, to, 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 to talk to uh, potential investors. So the next very important component, and this is something that we often forget when we have a solution, we often uh, put a lot of uh, energy and, and information in explaining what is the solution, but we often forget who exactly does this solution create uh, benefits for? Who's our, who's our cu customer? Is the government uh, our customer? Does, does this climate project actually benefit the government in their plans? Or is it a farmer? So the customer segment uh, is, is extremely important. If you know very clearly who is your, uh, who's the person or the group of persons that benefits from this solution, then you can also think about who might be able to pay for this solution. And then the third area of this nine piece uh, canvas, the, the third is revenue streams. If you believe that you can make a business case out of your project, then it has to be very clear who is actually going to pay for it. Again, in uh, a project for, uh, that is focusing on uh, ecotourism, it's very clear. You have a tourist and the tourist in the end uh, will pay. They will even pay before the trip starts. It, it's one of the, the say easiest business cases because uh, you get money beforehand for someone who pays for a trip that shows them nature. It becomes more complicated when you have uh, solutions for farmers or solutions that uh, help uh, communities protect themselves against climate change. It already becomes much more difficult to see who pays for you. 
and customer relationships, the relationship with uh, people that might be your uh, beneficiary of your project is then the fourth very crucial part of the business canvas. Who are the people that benefit from your uh, project and how do you communicate with them? How do you relate with them? Because only if you develop these relationships with the persons and the organizations that benefit from your solution, only if you have that rich relationship and have interaction with them, only then can you understand what they really need. And then the next step is uh, what are actually the different activities that, that you have to do to make your project possible. Of course, you need a plan, you need uh, to, to use certain technology, you need to, uh, to, to refine the, the, the concept. There's, there's all these activities. You need to travel yourself to meet your customers. You have to uh, meet with, with, uh, with potential investors. There's all these activities that are all on the cost side. These are all costs uh, that you somehow have to recover eventually when you sell your products. So mapping out the different activities that you have to do in order to make your value proposition possible is very important. And of course, you or your organization or your entrepreneurship or your company, you are not able to make everything happen yourself. You need uh, resources, for example, technology that others have developed or uh, approaches to, uh, to make your solution possible that other people have, have uh, experience in and knowledge. Uh, you need that to, to integrate that in your project. So there's different resources, uh, information, expertise, technology, but also, of course, finance. Finance is also a resource. So in order to be able to tell an investor that it is interesting for him or her to invest in your project, you of course have to know very clearly uh, and also be able to, to quantify what you really need in order to do the activities that you have to do in order to create the product that you know certain persons or certain uh, organizations will be able to buy. Uh, when you have all of this very clear, then you're also you will be able to show who is your partner and the partners with whom you're going to uh, to develop and expand your business are um, are are for example key suppliers if you if you use uh, satellite uh, imagery to uh, analyze uh, the, 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 the conditions of farmers in your area and you, you try to analyze weather information to inform your farmers uh, so that they can better uh, prepare themselves for, for, for uh, extreme weather events, then you probably need a partnership with the, with the, the organizations and the companies that uh, manage these uh, satellite uh, technology and that that also provides the, the, te the, the technology to, to translate that information into something that is useful for your farmers. So that's just one example. If you work on ecotourism, then of course there's various other operators, um, uh, companies that, uh, that help your customers to reach the destination, etc. So these will be key partners with whom you are uh, are linking your your business case with with whom you always operate together to make your business proposition possible and then finally cost structure is uh is is of course very important and for that you need of course people with the financial background that can show you very clearly what are the costs and the benefits and at what point is this a viable business case next slide please we will uh, share with you a more uh, extensive video that again explains this business canvas in more detail because we realize that this, um, this short meeting will not give you the full uh, uh, 
a picture, well, it gives the picture, but you know, to, to retain the information, of course, it's good to repeat this uh, looking at, at this approach and, and, and look how you can use it in your situation. So of course, for to, to really know whether this is a business case or whether you need some subsidy or whether you need some philanthropic money in, in addition to, to uh, private uh, funding, it is extremely important to understand that your return is positive. So it means that the revenue that you uh, generate through your, through your uh, product, through selling your products, the revenue should be more than the costs that you make. As long as the, the revenue is too low to overcome all the costs, then of course you don't have a return on your, on your investment. And if you, if you attract an investment, you will always need a surplus to be able to pay back the investment. So it is also very important, of course, to understand if there is even the potential for a business case, because if there's not, then of course you have to continue uh, focusing on philanthropic finance or uh, public finance. And once more for this exercise, it is also okay to uh, show projects that will need public finance. So don't stare blind only on the private finance. It's also fine. If, if, you, if your project uh, wants to attract public finance. Next slide. So the last session of my presentation is to give an overview of what we're going to do uh, in this week around this Dragon's Den. Next slide, please. Uh, on Wednesday at 12 o'clock UK time, we organize a session of one half hours and in this session we hope that some of you will present their project and while presenting this project we hope that you will able to be you will be able to show what kind of finance you need do you need pub do you need a, a donor uh, grant or do you need some philanthropic finance or do you think there's an opportunity to create a business case out of your solution? And if you see the opportunity for a business case, even if it's just in the, in the future, even if you, you will still need a lot of time to reach there, but if you have an idea of a potential business cases, then present that business case in its most um, basic form. So you don't need the whole, all the information about the, the, the the business model, etc. But but just the, the basic outline: who are your customers? What is your solution? What is your team? And we will get to that to that later. But we hope that three or four or five of you uh, and all the participants uh, in the CBA that some of you will take part and pitch your idea. Now the Dragons Den is a concept that was uh, introduced on TV, I think, 20 or 25 years ago in the UK first. And uh, you have these dragons that are called dragons because they are supposed to ask you some difficult questions. Now, of course, in our dragons, then we have very benign dragons. They're very friendly and they're there to help you. They are there to reach out to their own networks if, if they see a good idea and introduce you to their networks. Uh, but on Wednesday, they will focus on the critical questions and they will uh, decide who they think should be the winner of the competition. And we will combine that with the audience that will also decide who will be the winner. And then in, com in combination with the public, the audience vote and the decision of these four experts, uh, uh, the winner will be announced. So here you see we have um, Bijal Rambat, who is uh, uh, the director of, uh, of, uh, of an uh, innovative company. We have Edith Kish, who is Director Development and Portfolio Management of an Impact Investor. We have David Sol, who's working for a real commercial investor. And last but not least, we have uh, Pam Tuan An from Vietnam, from the organization Viet Nature, who has experience in pitching her idea and winning a Dragon's Den two years ago. She thought that her idea was way not there, that it was really in the very early stage, but still then, because the idea that she pitched was inspiring, 
had a very clear vision for the future. She won the Dragon's Den and from there on, she, she managed to attract different types of finance and work on her, on her idea. So these are the four dragons. Once more, they are benign dragons that will be very friendly and ask you uh, 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 questions to help you. So the dragons will use these key criteria to, to, uh, to assess whether your project uh, is, is of a winning kind. So your solution should be innovative uh, and have climate impact. It should contribute to broader sustainable development, or at least it should not do harm to broader sustainable development. So you don't want to pitch a climate solution that actually has negative impact on, on gender or that has negative impact on uh, poor sections of, of people that, that live in, in the area where you want to introduce that solution. That's of course a no brainer. Um, but anyway, so that they will look at that. Then of course they will look like, is there, is there the, the, the first outline of a potential business case? Doesn't have to be very uh, well advanced, but they will look at that of course, when they um, assess the project. Um, and in line with a business case, they look at, is it scalable? Are there opportunities to find more resources to uh, implement your solution at a larger scale. And last but not least, it's very important to show that you have a team, uh, a team that has experience in working with each other, that already has worked with each other, that has experience in dealing with uh, obstacles and, and issues and find solutions for those issues. So it's very important that you can show your team. Next slide, please. So uh, the rest of this week, Today we are in this introduction session. Uh, tomorrow we will have a session uh, that uh, will be interactive with you. Uh, it, will, um, it will help you in one-on-one -on -one discussions and in group discussions on uh, finalizing or developing your, your fledgling business idea. Uh, tomorrow, uh, at the end of the day, we have uh, the pitch training uh, that Jesper is, is going to lead uh, because when you present your business case, of course, you need a, a short pitch of uh, about probably five, five minutes. Uh, depends a little bit how many participants we have. Uh, if there's more participants, the pitches will be a little bit shorter. But anyway, in three or four or five slides, uh, you could be able to present your idea in its very basic uh, components. So you will get training in that, which of course is a training that will be helpful for, for the rest of your career. Uh, and then Wednesday, there's the moment of truth. There's the dragons then. Camilla, so sorry yes. to break in, but um, so the moment of truth is on Thursday and the announcement of the winner is on Friday. It's already Tuesday today. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Small detail. Yes, you're, you're very right. I was, I was, making this presentation yesterday and I, I guess I got uh, mixed up with it. Yeah, so, so tomorrow are these two uh, um, trainings. Uh, Thursday is the uh, Dragon's Den and then Friday is announcement. Thanks, Fanny, for... Uh, so let's get this slide out of the way as soon as possible. Because of course in the, in the program of CBA, you, you see the right timings and days for these, uh, for these sessions. So we hope that you have uh, signed up for these sessions as well. Uh, if you don't manage to uh, sign up for one or two of these sessions and you still want to develop uh, your idea, you still want to feedback, don't hesitate to just uh, write to us and we'll make sure that we, uh, we can also give you advice um, uh, at another moment if, if you need it. Also after this week, don't hesitate to contact us because this is a broader, longer term uh, opportunity that we want to, to make sure that we can work on together. So, um, so you know, this is for long term exchange and joint uh, creation of knowledge and experience. So if you want to uh, take part in the Dragons then on Thursday, then the basic questions that you should be able to answer is, 
very clearly what exactly is the problem you try to solve, how are you going to do this, and what are the, the climate and broader sustainable development impacts, why is your uh, solution new, why is this uh, something that, uh, that, um, that uh, merits uh, attention from investors, and what exactly is the financial value that you create? For whom is this useful and who might uh, possibly pay for it? It could be a government that wants to pay for it. So it doesn't always need to be an individual customer. Um, I see a question. Yes, we will uh, share this PowerPoint. We will definitely do that. Uh, and then the last is, as I, as I said before, who is, uh, who is in your team? It's, it's something investors always look at. Uh, they, they, they want to see, are you, are you working alone? Or do you have a team of experts and colleagues with whom you have an experience in, uh, in working on this particular topic? So these are the five questions that you should be able to answer in a short presentation. And the clearer and shorter uh, the answers are, uh, the more likely you are to, to win. And in the end of the day, it's not just about one winner because every person that has the courage to stand up in a virtual session like this and talk about their idea is a winner in itself because you have exposure and we will uh, work hard to, to introduce your uh, solution to other people who might not be here this week in the, in the room. Uh, so everyone is a winner who has this, um, this ability and courage to stand up and share uh, their ideas. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so thank you very much. And we now open the floor for questions. So please uh, take the microphone and uh, ask your questions or comments. We already have one, uh, or actually two questions in the chat. So shall I just ask, post them? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So uh, we have a question from Munisha from Nepal, and she's wondering whether you're, uh, when you're developing a, uh, a solution, so a, a product or a technology, then your main uh, customers are smallholder farmers, but you're not sure or you expect that uh, your solution might be too expensive for the customers that you have in mind. How would you deal with that? Um, <clears throat> and Monisha, feel free to uh, to add something if I uh, if I if I left something out. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Fanny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah, if I may just um, chip in here. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. I think that was really good to the point. Um, and it just brought a challenge, a project that uh, I had in mind, and that is um, climate information services bundled with agro-advisory. Right now, what we have is climate information services, but uh, they're not really localized. Mm -hmm. And because our farmers are so dependent on uh, rain-fed agriculture, um, a lot of the weather patterns would affect um, their crops. And if they are, you know, if they are able to find out a little ahead of time, then they can take, um, they can mitigate those risks. They can take precautions. Uh, yeah. But having said that, they may they are so poor that they are they may not necessarily be in a position to pay for these uh, advisory services. So yeah. I mean, then it completely jeopardizes the financial viability of the project yeah. if the government is not on board. Um, yeah. But what would good is for us to be able to demonstrate that as a pilot to yeah. have somebody um, you know to, to to create a business model wherein there is somebody um, some other customer segment that is benefiting from it and they are chipping in um, yeah. and also in a way subsidizing for the farmers yeah yeah very very good and clear question um, the the first question is do do the farmers produce for themselves or do they produce partly also for the market? 
as of now, a majority of our farmers are subsistence farmers. When we're talking about smallholder farmers, they are mostly subsistence. And uh, yeah. Yeah, clear. it depends on which, because we have different agroecological zones, so it depends on which uh, zone we are targeting. Uh, because yeah. the farmers, based on where they are, some of them may be commercial, you know, they may be not really commercial in that sense, but uh, they may sell surplus in the markets. Yeah. So there may be a very small, tiny commercial component to it, but most yeah. likely not adequate to pay for the service. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if, if there's a market component, then um, either the, the, the buyer of the produce could see this, this intervention of yours as a, as a way to deal with risk to their own supply. So that, that could then be the, the organization or, the, or the, the person that, that might be interested to invest in it because it's in the end in, in his or her interest that their supply is secure. Um, and it generally with uh, any solution that is for smallholders, the, the uh, aggregation of, of these smallholders is important. So if they operate as a group, as a cooperative, for example, then the cooperative might provide certain services for which the farmer perhaps pays a little uh, amount. But then the, the dealing with these kind of negative impacts and making sure that farmers don't have these impacts, this, is then a way of de-risking and that could then be um, beneficial and it could be translated into a business case through through the cooperative uh, and for example microfinance institutions uh, could be uh, interested in 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 this kind of finance so so this is this is going already in in uh, quite some detail which is great and um, i would i would propose to to look more specifically uh, tomorrow in this case, if you're able to join the, the business development um, session. And it's very good to know this particular uh, bit of information. And if you have more information, you can already share it with us so that tomorrow we can look a little bit further into this. Um, are there, is there anyone in the room that has a similar solution that deals with subsistence farmers or farmers that maybe only uh, market only surplus, so that that so farmers that are not fully commercial but but have a, a smaller link to the to the market. Are there other persons in the room that have similar projects? Because then we can also make a little group and look uh, at this in detail. No one. Well, yeah. Huh? yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, this is Ashish from Bangladesh. Okay. So yeah, we had also an idea actually that very close to that case uh, that you know that uh, in our southwest coastal belt in Bangladesh, the community actually suffers a lot from salinity problem. Okay. Yeah. So the poor and especially the women are vulnerable because they need to travel a lot to uh, collect the safe water. Okay. So in that case, if we come out with um, alternative technologies like desalination plant actually, and uh, can uh, make it to a social enterprise. So the availability of safe water at uh, community will be ensured. And if we can run the social enterprises through the engaging the women, so it will also create the job opportunities and others. But the problem actually lies again in that investment. Because yeah. you know that the vulnerable community who is a climate vulnerable living in that condition actually those who cannot afford to migrate or go outside right so that don't afford that so again yeah. comes about the investment and yeah. you know that government also actually does not invent that type of use technologies uh, currently yeah so how do you think it's potential <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i understand um yeah, we, we would have to look uh, in detail. Um, if I, I, it would be great if you could send some more information and then tomorrow we can, we can have a, a session to look in your specific case. Okay, so please do share your presentation that we can- uh, Yes, all yeah, the we points. will share the presentation. Okay, okay. Yeah. thanks. Thanks, Ian. So are there any um, 
any other questions? Are there any clarifying questions uh, with regards to, to what is the business case? What is the business canvas model? There was one additional question from uh, Monisha, and that focuses more on the component of the uh, the cost and revenue revenue uh, uh, overview. Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, do you already need to have a, a finalized budget ready for your presentation? And then I think that's that's for this week for the Dragons Den. Yeah. Um, but maybe we can even make this question a little bit bigger. To, uh, to discuss which items, what parts of the cost and revenue overview are most important or are the first steps that you that you work on? Um, and then, yeah. yeah. No, very clear question and uh, very important to address that. For this week, you don't need to have an actual cost structure in, of course, if you have it, it's great but uh, it's it's completely understandable that you don't have that data at this point and for the for the pitch at the dragons then session it's it's not necessary to have all the information but uh, in in answer to the second part of the question uh, if if and that's why the where the business canvas comes in place if you know very clear who's your customer and that's why also your first question was quite important. Is the farmer the customer? Is the cooperative the customer? Or is the, the, the buyer of the produce the, the customer that actually can pay for the, for the created value, uh, which often can be de uh, reduced risk to the value chain? If you have that very clear, then that enhances your uh, project tremendously, your proposal for the, for the dragon then. So, so a clear indication of who benefits and it can be three groups that benefit from it that's fine but if you have that very clear in your presentation that's that's one of the key questions um, and the second is uh, when you talk about uh, cost and return you, you have a potential return that that is what I just said the, the customer that that could pay for your service or your product and then the second thing is of course where are your costs? So if you can, again, doesn't have to be in, in figures, but if you can identify quite clearly, well, you know, the costs are in buying the technology, using existing technology, hiring uh, people to do this. You know, if you have a somewhat clear idea about where are going to be your main costs, then that's fantastic. So again, it doesn't have to be a fully uh, finalized financial plan but at least an indication of where your costs and where your benefits are and who benefits, who could be customer. Does that answer your question? Yes, Ian, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Funny, were there more questions already in the chat? Yes, we just received another question from, um... From Elisa from the Philippines. <clears throat> and uh, once again, Elisa, please add something if you feel that, uh, that you'd like to add something. But her question is that uh, how would you deal with, uh, with, with a project when uh, the effects and the, the positive impacts of your project will most likely occur in, in five to 10 years' time, but um, the, the actual project will only be a one to two year period project? How would you deal with that and to find, um, well, I, I think, to find investors for that? That's, uh, again, of course, a very good question. Um, uh, it's, it's already very good that you, that you have this distinction between the benefits at the longer term and the shorter term. Um, for example, in case of planting trees, it is, it is often difficult to find investment because the trees and the products of the trees only come in after 10 or even more years. Um, so it, in this case, it depends. If you, if you have a very strong track record and if you already have done similar projects, then an investor might uh, be confident to 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 overcome a, a certain gap. 
Um, if not, then you have to uh, you have to compart make different phases in your project and then look for uh, for different investors maybe in different projects. So maybe you need public finance for the first two years, and then when you demonstrate it, uh, how your idea can work, then you can apply for an impact investor to do an extensive uh, pilot, for example. Uh, but you can also mix uh, income streams. So, for example, if if you if you work on um, um, replanting of agroforestry uh, um, products, for example, if you if you have to plant rubber, uh, and the income will only be after five years, then if you if you choose to do this rubber planting along with other agroforestry products and fruits and nuts that produce quicker, then, um, then you basically help to overcome this, uh, this, this gap. Because even though the, the rubber will produce uh, only after 10 years, say, um, if you uh, intermix it with other products that create income earlier, then the, the project as a whole uh, becomes uh, economically viable. So it's <clears throat> so either you you adapt your solution uh, and combine it with with other uh, products or services uh, that can then make uh, it uh, possible to uh, to make to to attract uh, investment for the entire project, or you uh, you you. You create different stages for which you need uh, specific uh, investors. Again, this would be an interesting case to look into uh, more detail in. So, um, so I would encourage you to to send us the information and uh, and discuss it uh, tomorrow in the in the session on business case development. But please, uh, Ineza, tell please do respond to my answer because maybe. Uh, you have um, more information or you have follow-up questions. Elisa, would you like to respond? Actually, I was able to, to get the point and um, the idea of having adopt into the solution and combine it with a with the other product is a, is a good uh, is a good idea actually. So yeah, thank you. Okay. Great. Um, so then we can continue to Jesse. He raised his hand. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I, I had a comment and then I guess a, a question here. Um, the first, I think the comment goes to Elisa's point, which I think is really interesting about the, the project just running one to two years. Um, and I feel that's something that came up a bit yesterday in the plenary in the opening about how kind of funding you know, for adaptation is, is misplaced. Kind of the, the typical bilateral project-based financing is just not adequate for yeah. a lot of projects. So I think that's, that's an interesting question and, and kind of concern that Elisa mentioned. Um, and then my, my question actually I think goes back a bit to what um, I believe it was Monisha said, um, because within the sector of international development, international cooperation, and particularly climate change adaptation, a lot of the people who we are working with and who are working for don't have the funds or resources to actually really help pay for services. So that's kind of a, a missing link in terms of, I guess, the potentially the business model or the canvas, something has to be thought about. Um, and so my question within, well, I guess, within that context is a bit about knowledge services. Because again, this is an area where knowledge, particularly about, say, climate risks and how to turn climate risks um, into appropriate or effective adaptation responses, is something that has huge value, but it's really hard to put a monetary value, especially if you're asking the most vulnerable to pay for it or people who, who may be even linked. Um, so I guess my question is about that. And I know earlier you mentioned um, one of the tricks, one of the keys is how you can then turn public finance and leverage it into private finance. Um, and I don't know if it goes somewhere down that line, but I'm just curious to know, um, yeah, you know, how does that work when you're not really selling too much of a service because it has to do more about knowledge um, and understanding maybe capacities. So how can you how can you sell that to make it a bankable investment for someone? 
Yeah, that's um, that that's 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 the that's a challenge, uh, and it it of course depends on on your uh, specific uh, solution or service that that you that you want to provide. Um, something that comes to mind is um, um, uh, a, a, a provider of seeds, for example. Um, that, I mean, there's, there's examples of um, of seed providers that collect information uh, from from a farmer when they buy the seed, and they encourage the farmer to to sign up and share their uh, cropping details, uh, their their geographic location, um, and if they do so. They, they might get a discount on the seed because the, the pro provider of the seed is, is, uh, is more confident that uh, the product will actually uh, work. Um, or uh, in some cases, uh, insurers of, uh, of uh, producers uh, could, could be interested in a, in a certain solution, for example, weather information solution. So then, the farmer doesn't have to pay for that because they don't have the margin. But if if an insurer uh, could could see the benefit of that reduced risk, then uh, then they might be able to uh, to to pay for it. So it's it's, it's very difficult to to give a general um, idea. But it's it's the 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 idea is in in many cases that you have to. Um, you have to see who who else apart from from a smallholder farm, but who else who else would benefit from uh, from the reduced risk, for example, through information, and um, and because of this, when you look for smallholder finance, uh, the access to markets component is is very important because the farmer him or herself doesn't have the, the capacity to, to, first of all, attract finance because they're too small an entity. Um, uh, and, and also the, the, the benefit of the reduced risk um, is tangible for them, but it can't be translated in something that they want to pay for. But if farmers have access to markets, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the big commercial uh, agricultural companies, but it can also be sustainable uh, sourced uh, agroforestry products, etc. But if there is a commercial uh, entity that uh, is interested in the in the larger amount of uh, produce from a larger group of farmers, then then that entity is the one that can translate reduced risk into uh, uh, a financial return for for him, and that can translate in uh, attracting investment uh, and other other uh, possibilities are again combining different services so for example I, I don't remember the full details but I remember uh, uh, it was actually in southern Africa Africa it, it first started in South Africa they had this um, a container that provided cooling surfaces for smallholders that helped the smallholders to, uh, to, to, to have access to market, to the market and be able to sell the produce because they could store it in a, in a cooling uh, system, in a, a container that provide cooling. The smallholder farmers were not in a position to pay for the cooling, even though they, benefit to, uh, they benefited from, in, from it because they actually could, could sell their produce more easily and with less loss. But still then you couldn't possibly ask the farmers to pay for the cooling. So when they combined this cooling container with other services, for example, they provided electricity to other uh, entrepreneurs in, in the area and they, and they uh, rented out machinery to, to certain uh, other organizations or people, because they had a return on their costs to these other uh, uh, things they could then 
provide that cooling service for free to the farmers. It was, it was something like that. So it's, it's again, it's, it's about who is the market partner because they might have uh, a possibility to, to, uh, to create a, a return or how can you combine different services and then make sure that what you offer to the smallholder farmer is not something that they actually have to pay for themselves. But maybe someone else in the room has uh, other ideas about this. Just a heads up from Debbie that we only have a few minutes left. And uh, we do have a raised hand from Manish Monisha again. So uh, please, Monisha, share your suggestion. No, I actually wanted to just clarify the, the situation on the ground. The challenge we have is much more bigger. Uh, then we can, you know, conceive sitting out here, uh, yeah. because when we were talking, we are talking about smallholders. They, as I said, they don't produce um, for the market necessarily. They only um, sell in the market if they have a surplus, and this is the the customer segment that desperately needs this adaptation technology and uh, your your solution to i just wanted to give you a, a sense of reality like for example when it comes to seeds if they were producing on a commercial basis they would buy seeds from a commercial um, seeds company yeah. but because they're not um, producing for the market they are you know they are the ones who manage their seeds hmm. for the next planting season. So they yeah. really don't have a um, engagement with a commercial entity on that input end. Yeah. And then um, talking about insurance, they're not covered. Yeah. They're not insured at all. So there is no insurance. And then uh, talking about the market component, the uh, you know forward linkages, so to speak, uh, they may, uh, uh, well, Nepal is quite developed in terms of um, cooperatives, so they would be in one way or the other connected to a cooperative, but they may not be producing and selling on a regular basis to, to the cooperative who aggregates and then sells to the market. So that way, even the cooperatives are very underdeveloped or they're not very well financed to be able to to pay for services like this. So yeah. that is the, the, the extent of challenge that we're faced with. Yeah. If this was a commercial line of, uh, you know, commercial farmers, uh, then probably the, the solutions that you were offering would work, but we are talking about really subsistence farmers. Yeah, yeah, no, very good that you, that you raised this. We have a duty, we have a yeah. duty to also make sure that the solutions work for them. Absolutely, absolutely. There's of course different different types of uh, uh, farmers in different parts of a landscape, and it ranges from commercial to semi-commercial to the sort of uh, the, the subsistence farms that you talk about. In your case, you would probably uh, have to work with with public finance, finding uh, finance, and uh, larger amounts of finance to to develop models or to to help set up cooperatives or to to you know, whatever is needed. Of course, it's always lo locally, uh, you know, depending on your local uh, situation. But for for that kind of situation that you uh, just now sketch, uh, trying to access uh, uh, pri uh, climate finance, such as from Green Climate Fund or GF or maybe national uh, funds, would be at the very least the first step to to develop solutions. So. So you're probably too far away from a commercial proposition, but when access, when writing proposals for uh, public funders or international funding uh, that is grant based, it can already be good to also think about what in the future could perhaps be uh, commercial propositions. But I completely uh, agree that certain groups of farmers are 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 are. Know, are not in a position to 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 be uh, part of uh, of the kind of solutions that we just talked about. But that's also why I re-emphasize that the Dragon's Den is also about uh, uh, proposals that, for example, show how you uh, want to access uh, grants uh, for developing solutions. Yeah. 
Just so, very quickly, I know we're finishing up. I just just that, that last one. Could you reach out to me over email? Uh, and um, uh, I, I have two two organizations I think you should talk to. Um, but let's let's not do it here. But if you can reach me over email, that would be great. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Um, you are, you are asking Monisha to reach out to you, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So please do sign up for the, the business case development uh, session tomorrow and the pitch development session. And do uh, let us know if you're interested to pitch in the Dragon's Den. And um, if you're not part of the sessions tomorrow, also do reach out to us and let us know what you're working on. And then uh, hopefully we see each other in the coming days. Thanks a lot for the contributions and um, I wish you best in, in the rest of the, the week. And again, hope to see you uh, tomorrow in the next sessions. Thank you, Ian. Thank Bye, you for the yeah. session. Everybody yeah. behind the scenes. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you.